Hi, wonderful students. Good evening, or good afternoon, or good morning, or maybe it's 3 a.m. when you're listening to this. I have no idea. But if it is 3 a.m., please go to bed. You have school tomorrow. Right now, you're going to talk, well, I guess I'm going to talk, uh, about Article 1 in the legislative branch. We've already sort of talked about how the Constitution was set up. There was three different branches. Article 1 talks about the legislative branch. Article 2 talks about the executive branch. And Article 3 talks about the judicial branch. We're going to focus more on how the Constitution set up the legislative branch and how it works and how it interacts with the other two branches. The last lecture, you talked about the, the checks and balances of all three branches. And if you remember back to that, there was a check that the legislative branch had on both the executive and judicial. And there was also a check that each of the other two branches had on the legislative. So if you need to be reminded of those, go back and listen to that last lecture. It'll definitely help you out. I'm not going to spend and waste your time going over those again. What I do want to spend time on is how the legislative branch was set up according to the Constitution, so who got on it, how did they get on it, what were the certain requirements, that they needed to follow. Uh, and also I want to talk about very specific powers that they had. When we played the power grab game, or I guess you called it the power ranger game, we had, we had to find certain powers in the Constitution and where they were located. What I actually want to do is actually tell you what those specific powers are specifically uh, and where they're actually found. So uh, as you can see on this little picture here, the legislative branch is set up into actually two different parts. Uh, you have Congress, and then in Congress you have the House of Representatives, and you have the Senate. Uh, the picture on the top left is the Capitol building. Uh, the picture on the bottom right is uh, the chamber, the House chamber. That's where all the members of the House of Representatives, all 435 of them, sit and figure out the laws of this country. Now, the Constitution specifically states in Article 1, Section 1, Clause 1, so the very first line after the preamble, it says, All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives. So right there, it sets up what's known as a bicameral legislator. Now, bicameral means two houses. Bi means two, and cameral is actually a word for house. So, a bicameral legislator. You have the Senate and you have the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives is actually the larger of the two. Now, each state is going to get a certain number of people to sit in the House of Representatives based on population. So, larger states like Texas and California and Florida and New York and Illinois, those are going to actually have more people in them than states such as North Dakota and South Dakota and Montana and even Iowa. Iowa actually has five members of the House of Representatives right now, um, but because our population is, is getting smaller compared to the rest, of the, war, uh, the rest of the United States, we will actually have, only have four coming up in 2012. So that will be something interesting to watch uh, how that all shakes out. When a state goes from five to four, usually that means somebody has to get kicked out. So who's it going to be? Um, then you have the also non-voting people from like the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and Guam, uh, they actually, actually also get people to sit in the House of Representatives. Then you have the Senate, uh, the smaller of the two. Each state actually gets two. Uh, we have Harkin and Grassley. Those are two names that you probably heard of. Uh, they are Iowa senators, um, and each state gets two equal votes in that, no matter if you know, you have 10 people in a state or you have 30 million in a state. Each state will still get two senators. Now, the, the requirements for being a congressperson, either in the House of Representatives or the Senate, is the same. And again, it's found in the Constitution. The requirements are uh, in Article 1, Section 2, Clause 2. You have to be 25 years old. You also have to have lived in the United States for seven years. And then when you are elected, you actually have to live in the state that you are elected in. I can't live in Gretinger, Iowa and run for the Senate seat of Nebraska, even though I'm a huge deal in Nebraska. I'm one of the most popular people in Nebraska, Iowa. In fact, they actually have a holiday named after me. It's the John Fulton Holiday. 
um, and it's a really big deal. Um, even though I'm, I'm that popular in Nebraska, I can't run for Senate. I wish I could, but I can't. So I actually have to run for Iowa. I also wouldn't be able to run for another two years. Uh, neither could Alyssa Hoffman, uh, even though she's extremely popular in Gretinger, Gretinger, Iowa, and around the around the state. She can no longer. She is not eligible. She's not 25 years old. Um, but Mr. Hector can because he's over 25. He's lived in the state of Iowa, and he still lives in the state of Iowa, and he's been a U.S. citizen for seven years. So, Mr. Hector, for Senate 2012, uh, go ahead and start spreading that news around. There are specific powers that the legislator has. Um, these powers are actually written out specifically and given to the legislative branch. Uh, in Article 1, Section 8, that's where you have all these one-line clauses that say um, the United States uh, establish, or the legislative branch has the power to establish post offices. Uh, they also have the, the power to post roads. They have the power to coin money. They have the power to borrow money on the credit of the United States. So when the president um, says that he wants to borrow all the money from China, he can't actually do it. Congress is the one that borrows the money. So why? just a question to ponder. Um, when we talk about the debt of the United States and all of this, um, when, when, when people put the blame on the president, you know, when people put the blame on Barack Obama, when people put the blame on George W. Bush, um, it, in reality, Congress has, has the sole power to borrow money on the credit of the United States. Um, and they do that to pay for all these bills that they have, you know, to build roads, to build the post office. Uh, Congress has the, the power to declare war. The president cannot declare war under any circumstance. Uh, they can go and defend our nation if we need to, um, but Congress is the one that actually declares war. In fact, the last time that Congress has declared war, and I believe I said this in class, was in 1945, uh, 1941, after Pearl Harbor. Congress also has the power to make a navy. And they also have the power to promote the progress of science and useful arts. Um, so all these art projects that you could see um, around Iowa, uh, paintings, uh, buildings that are being made, uh, these could all be paid for by Congress. Okay, So your job is to respond to the discussion question that's going to be posted. It will be a bell ringer tomorrow morning. And that is how you're going to start your day. So without further ado, I'll, I'll stop talking and let you finish all your other homework, I'm sure.